welcome back to Hey, It's the Lescos. In the final episode of February. 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 I don't know why the R is uh, there. Because you don't why. say it. February, but the R is just like, hey, I'm here. Don't worry about me. But don't pronounce me. Right. Yeah, what a stumbling February. block. February. February. What a stumbling block the R is. February. Uh, what does February mean? We need to figure this out. What is the origin story and the, the, the whole story on why that word exists? What does it mean? What do you think? Well, I know in Spanish it's febrero. It's so the they, shortest of all the months. They do say the R in Spanish. It is febrero. also, okay, it's Middle English feverer. Feber? From old French feverer based, based on Latin februarius. From Februa, the name of a purification feast held in this month. The spelling changed in the 15th century. Yeah, it's nonsense. None of that makes any sense to me. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. But I will say this. Uh, today's episode of Hey, It's the Lost Ghost is a very special one. Hmm. You know, listen, audio, we never alienate those who are audio listeners. So if you're listening on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, access access more. more. Look, we the love majority you. Just of you the are same. audio, and there's times and places for no audio. No favoritism. Podcasts. I listen to tons of podcast audio, but this episode is one you may want to grab the video. Here's why: we did something very special. We have a project that's uh, coming in March uh, with our friends Brooke Lidgetwood and uh, her new project Seven. Her music that's coming out with that project. In my book, Last Supper on the Moon, there's a crossover between them, and that is they both touch on communion and the seven letters to the seven churches that Jesus wrote. Mm. And so we decided to do this fun project together. It's coming out in March. It's going to be airing on TV, and then it's going to be uh, premiering on YouTube. It's called From the Rock, Brooke Lidgert Wood and Levi Lusco, 7X Last Supper. And uh, so while we were doing that, we decided to film a live episode of Hey, It's the Luscos. That's not true. It's not live. It was live when it, was it happened. Live when it happened. Well, they're always live. We were okay. alive. A special from the rock episode of Hey, Let's <laughs> Goes. We brought her husband Scott up. We brought you up. So it was Jenny and Levi, Brooke and Scotty, and we had this amazing conversation that you're about to listen to, uh, which we get into creation. We we get into meaning creation of work, art, etc. We get into doing ministry together. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a real fun episode. It's really fun. We just love them so much. They're special ones. But if you watch it instead of listen to it, you will see us on the set of what looks like the surface of the moon, which we uh, recreated uh, for the purpose of this from the rock uh, thing. That so so TBD uh, standby for the actual from the rock coming out, which is going to be um, coming out pretty soon. Here, what are the dates for those? Look, look, I should know this. We should know this. We're, we're better but than it's this. It's okay. But we don't know. <laughs> you'll, if you follow us on social media, Brooke or myself, you'll find out. You'll see the date. That's coming out. <laughs> but uh, this is a very special, exclusive conversation that we did for our podcast today. How oh, much sure. do you love Brooke and Scott? I just love them so much. I, just, I also just love listening to them. Absolutely. Their voices are beautiful. Brooke's from New Zealand. Scott is from Australia. They are the Lidgert Woods. And we together have formed a cooking show called the Lusket Woods. This is Brooke and Scott and Jenny and myself, and we cook. Mostly it's Scott and I, actually, but <laughs> Brooke's involved. Uh, I'm just the videographer. <laughs> you were doing a great job of taking those videos. But then I, oh, yeah, then I ruined something Brooke, that Brooke was uh, making. Brooke heads up Hillsong sad. Worship. They also have an, um, a, a project they've done together called Creator with some other friends, which is uh, a, a really a way to set up worship teams, creative teams, and ultimately all teams within churches for success when it comes to leading and, and, and organization, worship leading, songwriting. Uh, that's C-R-E-A-T-R, which you can check out on Instagram, and then also uh, gets a subscription to be able to watch these conversations with people like Brandon Lake and Tasha Cobbs Leonard and uh, Taya from Hillsong United, as well as Brooks Scott. Um, a worship leading and a songwriting course on there. Some really great stuff. Yeah. Uh, so we just think the world of these two because of the way they want to set up people to win uh, regardless of where they are in mm. the church. And just their spirit. They just have a, they have a different spirit about them, it's a sweetness, a humility, and a love, pure love for Jesus and his church. And it's just refreshing. So check it out. 
Funk Soul Brother. Uh, some of the songs on Brooke's new record, Seven, are out now. Nineveh, A Thousand Hallelujahs, uh, and I think even one more by now. Mm. Uh, so you'll want to check those out wherever wherever you get your digital music. Um, and uh, do do look out for the From the Rock conversation that's coming. But do. It's a beautiful one. Until then, between now and then, as they say, mm. uh, please do enjoy this conversation with Brooke and Scott. Lidger. Hey. Uh, got how many years? Wait, how many years married for you guys? We're coming up 14. 14. Okay, yeah. almost 14. What when, about you guys? When, when, what month were you guys married? March. But it'll be 18 for us in April. Yeah. Mm. It does feel like a blip. Don't it you think? feels like a blip, and then also it feels like forever at the same time. Mm. Have you, um, do you kind of measure your, your timeline of your marriage in seasons rather than years? Does that kind of make sense? I think mostly children. Yes. <laughs> in terms of children, when people like we, because we just hit her 40th birthday and we were thinking back to like 30 was the year she turned when Linya went to. I, I turned 30 in 2012. Clover was born 18 days later. Wow. And then that December was when Linya went to heaven. Wow. So the, like our 30s was like wow. celebration amazing grief yeah. and we were just like i i guess i didn't really put connect the the dots of like the start of 30 mm -hmm. and how that was so do you think but, in years or, or in terms of seasons i tend to t think in seasons mm -hmm. yeah i'd agree with that just because of how kind of multifaceted when you say seasons well for us I take it you don't mean autumn no fall. no 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 like for me um because there's it's it's funny like our life is like a um, and it feels like a mosaic sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. Because we've got we've got the same life, but you could almost describe it in multiple worlds. Because when we got married, uh, Brooke was still fulfilling her five project, her five um, album commitment with um, Sony Music, and so we were. Um, she was um, making albums under under the Brooke album. Fraser, yeah, Brooke Fraser. And did so, you say Fraser? Fraser. So every time I've said Fraser, I've been off. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's Fraser. Yeah, it's like Razor. There's no S H. Yeah. No. Fraser is not the correct way. Oopsies. Wow. Well, good thing that life's Oopsies. over. Yeah. But, well, is it? No, it's still going. Oh, never mind. It's is still it? going. It's still a Fraser. Thing. Is it dead? I don't but know. you're not releasing under the record. Is all I'm, under that name is all I'm saying. At the moment. Well, at the moment. Mind blown. Yeah. Well, see, 2023 <laughs> will be 20 years since my first. Brooke Fraser record, so I feel like I should oh, do a little, little like something. throwback or something. And here oh, something I was I putting wow. roses on top of it. Mm. Unbelievable! How disrespectful! <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. It feels like that season, that life felt like one. Well, because that's because well, that's what I was when we got married. I was on staff at church. That was the last time I ever held a job, a, pro uh, a proper job. <laughs> um, and and so we 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 lived around the world. Um, uh, we lived in Sweden. We lived in London for a bit. We lived in New York. We lived in, you know, um, mm. eventually coming out to California. But wow. we lived back in Sydney for a season. And so that feels like our season. And we didn't have kids then. And then we had uh, we had Dylan, our eldest. So that be, I felt like that birth, the start of another season. Because I, I agree with you that kids definitely mark a season. Yeah. And then on the birth of of our second daughter Rooney, um, that's when Brooke, um, uh, you, you um, kind of became the head of Hillsong Worship. Mm. No, became about it. No, what? No, no, kind of about it. Just became the head of Hillsong oh. Worship. Yeah, kind of like you know whatever that means. <laughs> I just like the kind of. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, she just did. She became. Yeah. But then that's been a season that's that's now five years, mm. and so yeah, it feels like. There's been wow. That's a movement. Yeah, it like feels the like there's been three distinct kind of seasons yeah. for us. I don't know. I'd say I, we probably also. It's, well, that's the interesting thing about marriage, isn't it? We have two different experiences of the same life. Mm. Wow. Um, and I loved once Oprah said this great thing um, about you know one of the the and I don't even think she's married, so I don't even really know why she said this, but that um, that one of the the miracles of marriage is that um, you get to be a witness to somebody else's life. 
Mm. Um, and oh. I and I I love that. I love that I get to bear witness to his life. Mm. Um, with I have a question. With when you two decided to get married and join your lives, and um, you, I know both have always had a, a strong sense of calling and, um, and and purpose and ministry and all of those things. Um, has has your journey together married and within the context of ministry looked like you thought it would look? Or did you have any preconceived ideas about what that journey would look like? Well, it's interesting because I feel like we have so many friends nowadays who are they're getting married older in the sense of like, I mean, Levi was 21 and I was 22 and we got married. So I feel like we didn't, we had a little bit of life on our own, but we were like babies in like joining our life together. So I feel like some people who maybe get married in their 30s or 40s, like they're literally like they have their own lives and mm. then they're just like melding their lives together, which I can only imagine would just be awesome, but also like complicated. Mm. But I feel like when we, we were both so, um, stirred and our lives were changed by um by god through missions and like serving in other countries and um just feeling like god's calling on our life through that that we were just ready like ready for whatever god had mm -hmm. and i know for me when i moved to albuquerque which is where i met levi um i moved there to be a part of a missions internship with the church there and so for me, I was like, God, I will go to China. I will go to Africa. I will go anywhere in the world that you want me to go. How about Montana? And so, <laughs> and we met, I met Levi that year and we got married two years later or whatever. And then when God called us to California, like that made so much sense because we always just felt like God was calling us to reach a lot of people. And so we we're like, oh, we're, we're going. But then when God was calling us to Montana, that didn't feel like what we thought we were our ministry was gonna look like but anyways all that to say I think it's just been more and above and beyond what I even in my younger years ever dreamt of because it just like when you just fully surrender to what God has for you it's just wild mm -hmm. and it's like overwhelming and beautiful and hard and good and horrible and amazing and all those things. But it's just like, I just love that we both were at one point, like God, whatever. And then he's just mm. led us to all yeah. the whatevers mm. and all the beauty. But, Same question. Yeah. As you guys came together, is it, did you kind of get a zero plan? Yeah. <laughs> like zero plan, like zero, right? Yeah. Like I'm 38 years old still have zero plan. It feels like every season, everything that we've had has snuck, not snuck up on us, but it's, God has revealed to us in the appropriate time. And it's mm. kind of like, okay, now this is, and, and the, the, the changes have happened, the significant changes have happened within months of them landing on our doorstep. Like, mm. so it's not like, hey, I'm going to prepare your heart. <laughs> and true. then in 15 mm. years, this is what you're going to do. Doesn't it's it, like, hey, this isn't is so refreshing? three weeks. You know, mm. you know that you don't, oh, yeah. you don't, so I just can feel the younger people listening going like, oh, okay, good. Like, I don't know. Yeah. That's yeah. okay. Yes, 100%. Absolutely. Um, I wanted to ask a question um, about, you know, I was thinking about how, you know, when you were talking about God called you to um, here and then California and mm. then Montana, like, um, I was thinking about the times in our own marriage when we've sensed God leads, God's leading, but sometimes he's spoken to one of us before he's oh. spoken to the other. Mm. And by that, I will say that my husband hears from the Lord. And sometimes it takes me a minute to catch up. <laughs> and perhaps in the past, I've acted with anger, rage to um, <laughs> what the Lord has told you, which you were right. Um, but has there ever been no. a time when, you know, you... I need to you... qualify that. Let me, <laughs> you guys answer and then come back so I can throw myself on this fire because she's being, she's being very kind. No, but you're, you're usually right. And I'm usually the stubborn one. It takes a minute to come around. Yeah. I take a minute to come around. Has that ever yeah. happened? But we can digress into, into communication skills. Yeah. Jenny, uh, Jenny, I would say that she's doesn't love decisions. She doesn't love choices. So it's been more easygoing where she's more like, happy 
like happy. Like I remember I go, I'm going to move to California. I feel like we should do this. This is what I said. And she's like, sounds great. And then it, literally the Montana thing, I think I was trying to talk myself into it, but not sure. And I told her about it and she was like, that sounds good too. Like it, she just <laughs> oh has gosh, been such amazing. a go with the flow. Wow. But that said, like, I feel like those big things are almost easier to like go with the flow with. I feel like mm. it's the little things like Levi saying, hey, I want you to, um, to go skiing with us. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no. <laughs> like, I literally, I don't know what it is, but like, I'm just so. You don't so, like being cold. I don't like being cold, but I just, I, I'm okay <laughs> just being home. Like, yeah. all day, every day. Mm. And I, I would just be homebody. And I'd be okay with that, like, my whole life. But I, what I love, though, <laughs> that Levi pushes me in is, like, getting outside in the world and going on Getting dressed every and, once in a while and, yeah. <laughs> Changing my shirt. Yeah. Um, but I think that that's what's so beautiful about marriage is that we each have our own strengths and weaknesses and we can bring them out in each other. But I really do feel like any big life thing, which honestly haven't, hasn't been... I don't know. I feel like moving to Montana was like a big thing, but it also wasn't. She was like, okay. <laughs> but that was exciting. But it seems like that's, a little, but that's the mission spirit, the pioneering, go out, blast off for the moon. But also, I feel like, I feel like God's showing me and teaching me, like, I am very go with the flow. And I am very, I don't want to like confront or cause waves or really say like what I'm feeling. But I feel like I'm 40 now. Hopefully that will change soon. But I feel like God is stirring in me just the the readiness and willingness and boldness to speak up and to wow. say something. Like to say, this is awesome and this is how I feel about it. Or I don't know. And I, I feel like Levi is so good at vision and leading and I can easily follow and I love following him. But then also being bold enough to say like, oh, but this is also how I really do feel. Mm -hmm. And maybe not knowing how I feel, but also like, Figuring that I out. I don't like it. my jeans being ironed. Matthew McConaughey. Yes. <laughs> Finally realized. Did you listen to that? Green lights. <laughs> his jeans were being ironed when he got famous. And then one day his friend was asking like, but do you actually like your jeans being ironed? And he's like, I don't. <laughs> Until he realized his jeans were being ironed, but he didn't even like it. Thanks That's for funny. explaining so finally that. Talked about well, it. Who was ironing them? Some like housekeeper <laughs> would iron his jeans, and he was like bragging to his friend about how great it is being yeah. rich and famous. And he's like, "She irons my jeans," and his friend's like, "But do you like that?" And yeah. <laughs> he's like, "Not really." Yeah. And he ends okay, that chapter. So, the moral of the story is: just because you can doesn't mean you should. Yeah, yeah. that's that's a good moral. Okay, what was your? Well, she, I mean, she qualified. She said that there's been anger and rage to these <laughs> these um, big changes, but like the way I communicate things or don't. So the, how we ended up in California <laughs> was when um, one of um, you know our friend Ben Houston, who planted Hills on California, we were um, we were back in Sydney at that time. I can't remember where we were living. Maybe in London, New know. York. Weren't you, weren't you playing basketball or something? Yeah, like it was that? in Sydney. And he had just um, had a conversation with uh, Pastor Brian about planting the church in California. And we're sitting there and we're shooting hoops. And um, he uh, and he said, hey, um, I'm going to plant this church. And we and I just said, oh, we'll come. And and he was like, oh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying it because... You're not technically invited. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't think it. But I was like, no, we'll come. I was like, I was like um, uh, and the funny thing is, which is, um, it's only now when I reflect on it. Oh, by the way, the before I go down this path, so I'd totally forgotten about that conversation. This is a real, genuine story. <laughs> I'd totally forgotten that I had committed to moving my family to <laughs> California. So we're in the middle. How many of, thousands of miles that is? Yeah. Uh, I can't remember where we're living. But uh, we're in the middle of worship at Hillsong Conference. This is no word of a lie. I wish I, this wow. just makes me look so bad. <laughs> and I understand, but look, who cares? It's funny. Um, and I turned to Brooke and I was like, in, in the between, midst of in between saying, songs? I'm talking about, yeah. Probably like, in, it's the like, bridge, like in the short bridge. In the bridge of a song or whatever. <laughs> I said, and I looked across to her and I said a couple of things. And I said, and then by the way, I said, um, ben, ben and Lucille are going to plant the church in California. And she was like, unbelievable. And I was like, yeah, and we're going to go. <laughs> And then the look on Brooke's face. Thunder. 
Thunder. <laughs> and I and I knew. I knew that you'd worried stuffed up. You're gonna have to. <laughs> it's much like Abraham and Sarah though, right? Yeah. Wow. And the, but the 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 funny thing about this whole it just it makes me feel so it makes me sound so aloof. But the funny thing about it, we always had a running joke that the last place we'd ever live on we'd we'd go God can send us anywhere except for L.A. except yeah. for just California. Don't send us yeah. to like because we just we never had a we just didn't really love the city. Yeah, but I also had no. This is the other background is that I had no leg to stand on because yeah. about a year and a half prior I had said we were in Sydney. I was like. Yes. I think we need to move to Sweden <laughs> temporarily. Yes. And because I've I think that the Lord has said that there will be songs there. And you and you and you were right. And I was right, but it was also we moved to Sweden in the middle of winter. Yeah, that's <laughs> where you wrote Hosanna. That's no, that's where I wrote my brutal romantic album, Brooke Fraser. Brooke Fraser. <gasps> and then a ton of other songs. Um, was, and it was super fun. But you have to understand the dynamic. But that was quite dramatic. The dynamic so of our dramatic. of our and so we're not, it's not like we, we bounce all over the world, like just, you know, living everywhere. Like we have, we're part of a global church. So we've only ever lived in cities where we have our church, mm. you know, so Hillsong mm. London, Hillsong New York City, Hillsong Sweden. We were always part of the same house, Beautiful, yeah. same fabric. Mm. Mm. But the dynamics of us, of our, of our life has always been like, just, yeah, let's do it. You know, since Beautiful. we've last had a conversation like this, the four of us on a moment like this, there's been some big things that have happened. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to at least bring them out for us to talk a little bit about. And it'd be fun to kind of think about the the marriage implications on working on projects together. Mm-hmm. But you guys have launched a children's book, your first children's book, mm-hmm. What a Beautiful Name, mm-hmm. which uh, lyrics and story based on the song that you guys wrote with a mutual well, I didn't friend write, couple. Um, oh, you were a part of the songwriting the, of the... No, no. So Ben Fielding and, and Brooke wrote the song. Okay. Heard it. It's great, by the way. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> well, congratulations. I know you got a Grammy, but I just wanted to finally weigh in. I know you've been waiting to think. Uh, what yeah. does Levi actually we think of this song? Really good. This Turns song. out it's a very good song. Um, you have no rival. You have no equal, no equal. I really like that part. Yeah. Um, oh, but now, God. Kids Book, you did all the illustrations for it. Yeah. Okay. So that's amazing. amazing. We've read that to our kids a thousand times. Oh, so then good. secondly, you launched Creator. Mm-hmm which I do think we should talk about that a little mm. bit, for those listening. Um, and then thirdly and finally, you have um, this brand new season of life because there's now Brooke Lidgertwood, mm. which is a solo project, worship leading endeavor, mm. uh, which is fantastic. Seven mm. is the name of the first, which at the time people are listening to this, uh, there's a couple singles already mm. out, which is incredible. So, I mean, congratulations to you. Those three things yeah. in a very short period of time. Uh, but I, I think it would just be fun to kind of hear a little bit about some of those. And then also marriage and doing that together. The good, bad, the ugly of like, hey, we're you're my wife, you're my husband. Mm. But also now like we're kind of like working alongside each other yeah. that way. Before we do that, let's acknowledge three significant things that are happening <laughs> this week. One... Jenny turned 40. Hey. So, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. You released, day over 30. You released That's Last true. Supper on the Moon as, as we're recording. came out two days ago. And the Fresh Life turns 15. So, yeah, seriously. What a huge deal. week. It is it's a big week. deal. And big God week. sent our and birthday here. present right yeah. here. Here yes. we are. Yes. Um, and working together. That is a thing. <laughs> We're working on it. We're working on it. <laughs> and I actually am really I'm actually really happy to tell people that. Like as yeah. in the thing is about Brooke and I, we're so different as people. But our value system is exactly the same. Yes. Mm. So we have completely different um wants and likes and not I shouldn't say wants. We have like like things that we like to do, hobbies, how we like to spend our time, things like that. There's there's things we like to do, like obviously we have um things we like to do as a couple, but our processes. Um, what are the things you like to do as a couple? Uh, well, we like family. We like to cook. We like, we like being at home. Mm, we really like being at home. Yes. It sounds weird, but we like, we genuinely like each other. Mm-hmm. Like we like each other's company. So a lot of the things that we do, it's actually like, it's not like we need the things to fuel the, mm. it's not, 
So we go on walks and we have conversations. We're with each other all the time mm. because we work. One thing that we did, this has only ever happened once, but one thing that I did like that we did during the pandemic, which I would recommend, is we um, we had a stand-up comedy night. Do you know Just... what? I, I, some, for some reason, I knew you were about to say that. Oh, well, it's like weird. you're married. It's yeah. Married. But what we did, we each had, but it was like, a, it was very fast. We each had five minutes to research jokes on the internet. Yeah. And then we had to present the stand-up Wait, routine. you told the jokes to each other? Yes. Yeah. So we did so, five minutes of stand-up yeah. So we had to research jokes and then put them just together. Just you two, into, not your yeah. kids? No, no just I'm us. telling you right now, <laughs> this is the single most vulnerable thing you will ever do oh, yeah. I can oh, see in that. your life. So we were just, time. Yeah, yeah. So for, I'm not a comedian. She's super funny. Very funny. Um, so, so we had five minutes of stand up in front of each other. But it was one of my favorite things that happened. During that is amazing. Moment. But she crushed it. Thank like you so I much. was legitimately I it, laughing. I definitely think it was a one-off, but it was. And I really bombed. Fun. Did you do it so multiple times hard. or just the one time? Just the one time. But we just should do it again. Yeah. But I, I really bombed. felt led by the spirit she because slayed. you know my jokes were very. I loved dad jokes. You didn't write the jokes. I didn't write them. You found. I just them. had to find. Yeah, them. but you have to link them and you have to link them. You have to set them up. Did you memorize them? No, no, no. You can read. My phone. Okay. But you know how stand ups they link it. They there's like somehow they link it. So, my gosh, anyway. that, that's out of Her movie. flow was yeah. amazing. Anyway, we did it anyway, once. So it was Stand up still to this day, day the single most vulnerable so thing we've ever done. Did you have yeah. a vulner? I know I meant to ask you this earlier, by the way. We had the other conversation. Yeah. Did you have a vulnerability hangover oh. on the back end of that last recording? It's, yes. Mm. It's still happening. It's still happening. It's still happening. Yes. Yeah. I can't imagine. Putting yourself out there, they say, is a wonderful thing. They say, there is a sense in which you do feel. For being naked out there mm. in, the, in that you're way. You're so authentic, they say. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Okay. Sorry. But continuing. So yeah, I mean, the the we've gotten um, way better at working um, together. Yeah. It's a it's a trip it's a trip though. Yeah. But I would say the thing that makes it work is that we are both um, driven by the same thing. Yeah. We value absolutely. the same thing. How we treat people. We 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 both. It's important yes. to us how we treat people. Um, How we the things that we value are, are the same. So even though our processes are very different, um, and so at times the processes can, it's not necessarily that we're rubbing up against each other, but sometimes no. the processes yeah. rub up against each other. May I, on behalf of a 22-year-old person listening to this mm. right now who says, hey, I'm trying to figure out mm. if this girl or guy has that, what about you when you were just dating and trying to figure that out about each other, like helped you know that you had the same values mm. to avoid them the heartache of ending up 20 years later with someone who doesn't have that. Yeah. Well, ours wasn't love at first sight, no. which was, um, we again, like all great things that have happened to us, it snuck up on us, mm. um, our, our relationship. <laughs> but we were just, so at the time, um, there was this book going around and I won't say what it was called, but it, it it meant that the, the the dating scene in the young adults <laughs> ministry was super weird, mm. super weird. Mm -hmm. Where where you know Brooke and I are first generation Christians, so I came in and, and I, we I found our church and I you know I found this amazing new life. But I still was like, why is everyone so so, so weird? Why why isn't everyone just normal? And so and then Brooke, um, same. I mean, she was a, a, a touring musician and releasing albums and things like that. So. They had these things where, you know, you had to leave room for the Holy Spirit and you had to, you know, all these things that are great and they're great advice, but the manifestations of it was like nobody dated, no one talked, everybody yeah, was... Yeah, people did things in hiddenness. Yeah, in like, hiddenness or what... Mm, and we just, we we didn't have that. So we yeah. just got on really he basically, well. Basically, I felt like he was the only person who interacted with women normally. Mm. <laughs> and and so we would just sit up, I remember, for like yeah. to like two or three in the morning sometimes just like with genuinely there being like zero yeah, chemistry. Yeah, plus Other than we would, and we would sit up and drink a glass of wine and talk about the Lord and the things of mm -hmm. the kingdom of God. Um, I would talk about other girls that I'm interested mm -hmm. in. in and, and it wasn't that we, that we were just like, we would hang out Classic one, one move. at a time. Make her jealous. <laughs> We we um we, like we would hang out in groups or whatever, but then it would be like if you know if everyone kind of slowly got up and we're like oh well I'm just gonna but like that so that friendship helped you sniff out the values then yeah yeah and we also we don't really have I mean you don't really have a filter <laughs> I don't really have a filter no we're not very good at Brooke and I aren't very we're good not very at like, polished yeah people. we're not polished people you would know from being friends with us it'd be like hey it's one of the best things we love about it's you it's the whizzy wig. <laughs> The, the wizzy wig. Wizzy wig. W y s i w. What you see is what you get. Wizzy wig. Uh, 
I'm sure there's hidden parts like all of us. Like we're not, you know. Um, but yeah, we. So I, when we started dating, like I didn't have to ask anything. I already knew. Mm. I was like, cause there was no reason to, you know. But I would say for the for the twin to go back to your question because I think it was we were. I'm trying to think. I think we were twenty two ish when we. Or maybe twenty three when we started dating. Mm-hmm. So we're about that about that age, you know. We were getting to know each other as friends at that exact age, and I think the things that uh, set him apart in my mind, not thinking of him at all as a spouse, but just I was like, there's something different about that guy. Mm. Um, I I remember he was working at a retail store called General Pants, which is kind of a little bit a little General bit like Pants. Urban Outfitters or something. Like Urban Outfitters, kind of. And I remember we went. I went to have lunch with him on his lunch break, and he was like, "Oh, hey, I've just got a." Um, I've just got to um, take the trash out to the dumpster behind the mall. Like, do you want to come? And then we'll go to lunch. And so I remember we went um, we went back to the back of the mall, the dumpster, so he could dump the trash from the store into the dumpster. And there was a kid that worked at KFC, which was dumping the KFC trash into the dumpster. And I remember Scotty knew his name, knew everything about him, mm. asked, asked two or three specific questions about his life. And I, it just has always stuck in my mind as he... He just really he sees people, <coughs> and um, and people matter to him, and um, that always stuck out uh, to me. Um, I loved his mind. I love his curiosity, yeah. which not only has it remained, but I think it's, it's gotten just, worse. <laughs> okay. I think it's expanded. But you, he's so curious about the world, so curious mm. about the Lord. And then, and obviously, the main thing is he loves. He genuinely loves and walks with Jesus, mm. um, and loves Jesus's church. And church is not a substitute for his relationship. He doesn't fill his life with Christian activity because you know I also had friends that got married around the same age, and they were people whose lives were filled with Christian activity. Mm. Um, but but uh, you know, friends who met people who for a season were involved in a lot of Christian activity, but there wasn't a genuine relationship with Jesus um, and and now those people are in tough positions you know so yeah. I think for the 22 year old um, somebody who is somebody whose values you share somebody who loves people the way that you want to love people mm. and and some and a person who's genuinely walking with Jesus and probably much more but that's huge Beautiful. all yeah. of that yeah walk us through creator talk us a little bit about that <clears throat> where that vision come from what it is um, well, Creator came from the conversation we had with um, our friend Dylan Thomas, and he he kind of knew the online. He's learning. a part of Hillsong United. He's part of Hillsong United. Good friend, long time friend, and um, the conversation came from from this being birthed. He he knew the on the online space, and um, again, Brooke and I hadn't talked about this prior to starting. It wasn't like a big life mission that we felt like God had put on our hearts. Um, originally, when I when he when um, Dylan talked to us about it or talked to me about it, I didn't quite get it. Just the space, and then um, but we had talked about it for a long time. Well, there's a few things that we're passionate about. So, creator was is more of a connecting of a lot of dots than it is like oh we had this vision. It was like this 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 kind of like central idea came in. It was like oh my gosh, like there's a few things here that um, that align. And and um, gave the green light, but what Creator is in essence is it's a re- we want it to be um, the most helpful resource to worship and creative communities in mm. churches everywhere. This is songwriting, graphic design, any yeah. aspect of creativity. Yeah, well, I mean, it's <clears throat> at the moment it's in its um, infant stages, and like all good things, it takes time to build and um, time to earn respect and and to uh, begin to help before we can, you know, go and plant a million different trees. But um, but in essence, what, what it is, is a, it's, it's, it's not just Brooke and I and Dylan. It's a whole bunch of, of the people, in, um, you know, established names and some of them not established names in the worship and creative community globally that have come together and have said, you know, what we want to pour into the next generation, not when the spotlight leaves in 20 years time and be like, oh, you know what? Like now's the time to start mm. to sow into generations below. Um, the driving force behind Creator is, and and I would love to like bounce off and ask you a question in a second about Creator because- and We can articulate. talk about it from the subscriber standpoint because we love it. Yeah. Love it, love it, love yes. it. Yes. We yeah. sat down with some of our team to watch 
stuff on songwriting, stuff yes. on leading. I mean, you have a the art the art of high praise is the name. Welcome to high praise. Welcome to high praise. <laughs> <laughs> but on a very granular level, you walking through how you put together a worship set, yeah. how you pick what songs. Yes. I know from our team, for us leading a church, like that was helpful. Like to yeah, hear that spirit. Awesome. Um, uh, yeah, so we can't thank you enough for putting that up there. It's kind of, I mean, to put it to, I know it, it's awful. It's big. It, back in the day, they used to go, if you like Nirvana, you'll love this Christian oh, band. Yeah, the yeah. Sim- I don't want to do that to it <laughs> no, because no, I feel like it's fine. degrading, but it is for those who have the concept in their head, kind of a masterclass approach where you're paying to get access to content that's going to be very specifically helpful from mm-hmm. people who have a proven track record. Brandon mm-hmm. Lake, Tasha Cobbs, Leonard, yes. others coming in mm-hmm. and distilling their knowledge in a really, 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 really beautifully presented way. Yes. Yeah. And yes. before we ever picked up a camera or anything like that, we researched into how people did long online learning because we were like, we don't want to add to the noise. Mm-hmm. If we're going to do something as a community, we want to do something that's going to genuinely, genuinely help. We kept saying that. It's, mm-hmm. We don't have this fancy vision. Mm. It's to be the most helpful, not to be number one, mm. not to be the best, mm. not to be, it's literally the most helpful. If we're not, if, if it's not helping, yeah. mm. then just let's just go and do something mm. else. Right. And so we researched how, um, you know, we had people who create courses and create online education and not just in the accredited, accredited like the, you know, um, colleges and university. I'm talking about people who did weight loss programs and people who do, you know, um, self-help programs. And this is not self-help. But the science behind it and the mechanics oh, behind yeah. it, we wanted to make sure that if people were spending money because it costs so much for us to produce these courses, um, that uh, that when they took it, it would genuinely hit that goal of being helpful. Mm. And so every course is not somebody didn't just like put a put a talk together an hour and a half beforehand and then get up and do it. Everything's right. heavily scripted, heavily yeah. researched. Everything um, uh, is approached with the same um, level of, uh, uh, del- I mean, every every touch point it's is so deliberate. deliberate. It's super <clears throat> deliberate, <throat> which is the reason why um, there's not 150,000 videos on there at the mm. moment. Like we're growing this thing. So every, at every point it's like, oh my gosh, like if I watch this worship leading course and by Brooke and then I watch this one by Tasha, they're not, there's no crossover. So there's actually no two, even within the worship leading stream, there's no crossover of topics mm. because it, and, and, um, and that uh, it's so deliberate for us because we could just scale the content as, as fast as we needed to, but we right. just don't feel like that's what creators, um, role is is in the church where we want to be a scalpel not a broadsword mm. it's mm. and we want it to Love be that. helpful and and what Craig is not trying to do is disciple worship teams um because worship teams are planted in a local church and that's where they get their discipleship and from their leadership this is a come alongside this is a this is a help what i um i love how you kind of talk about creator because you're very articulate what would you answer about creator I feel like you gave a great answer. I feel like it was very comprehensive. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for, uh, you know, I, I, I love panels at conferences, but there's only so much that I can give somebody. And it was really about um, just as we began talking to a lot of our friends. Um, there, I mean, you can you can find a lot of the things that they have taught if you were to have you know four days straight to scour YouTube, you know, from and glean and put stuff together, but. Um, the opportunity to distill something really potent um, and also present it um, in a way um, that where every aspect is intentional and we wanted to the other the person on the other side of the screen to feel so valued and to mm. feel so seen mm. and it's not um, it's not like it's not um, it's not puffy decoration mm. it's um, it's it, it is talking about practically growing in skill and 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 sharpening gift, but also um, with a really really strong um, desire to to pass to people into the understanding of why that's important. What is mm. what? How did Christ design gifting to be applied within the body? Because mm. we know particularly with creative oh. gifts, there's a lot of misunderstanding mm-hmm. um, about that and a lot of misapplication of it. So if we can, if if we could, you know, humbly present this and say. Um, and say, this is, hopefully this can help you, but hopefully it can also pass to your heart as your hand is being 
kind of um, upskilled, if that makes sense. There's a legacy component in that too, I would imagine for you, that's gratifying the sense of, I'm stewarding my gift well enough to allow others to have the benefit of how I've used it. Yes, mm. yes. Yeah, I remember when um, we, the, day, the first day we started shooting my songwriting course um, in our prayer meeting beforehand, I just wept with gratitude and almost relief because uh, at this point I've been writing songs for 20, wait, how old am I? 26 years, 26 years. Wow. And, um, and the opportunity to be able to just give people the tools that I have in my hand in this particular way, I just felt so grateful because I don't want to die with all this stuff in my head. <coughs> if I can get it out and help mm. somebody, I want that to be um, mm-hmm. the reality. And so that's such an important so thing. Like we're all pretty well at that same spot, late 30s, early 40s. Let us know how that's going. Um, <laughs> Great so far. Uh, but Elijah, who thought he was the only prophet of God, found out, I've got 7,000 others, God said. Mm. And then the next thing he did before he died, you see him spending, checking in at all these different schools of the prophets. Mm. You see him like, oh, I didn't know that it was other people. Mm. Well, now let me, like, even to the day he died, he went and visited at least three of them we know. Oh, wow. And Elisha picked up right uh, where he left off and was investing in those Bible colleges all throughout. So I just... I think there is something naturally that makes us kind of realize if we're thinking, who's going to be following God after me? Who's going to reach my grandchildren yes. for mm-hmm. Jesus? And how do I scale that out in a way? And this is really an incredible thing because it's limitless how many people it can cumulatively reach. Yeah. yeah. Well, and plus, at our age, like, I mean, we're I mean, we're not old, old, but we're still like now we're, we have people that are pouring into us and are older and pouring, but for us at this age to be able to pour out and have the mind mm. to get, yeah, maybe we don't know everything, but God's shown us something. Yeah. I think like when, um, bef- before I wrote a book, I always was like, I am, I'm, I don't have time. I, yeah. I can't do that. Like, I'm just going to wait till I'm old and gray and I have time to, to speak mm. and re- reach out and write something. But what's been, what, What's so amazing is that when you're in it and maybe you're struggling through it and you don't have all the answers and you're mm-hmm. not doing it perfectly, but you're sharing what God's doing in you and teaching you, that's almost, at least what we've heard mm-hmm. and seen, that's almost even more powerful because it's like, I don't have all the answers yeah. and I, I can't tell you how to do it, mm-hmm. but I can tell you that God is here and he's good and yeah. he's going to lead the way. So I think that that's so helpful to be at our age. Mm-hmm and to share, and to teach. Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's so powerful and so mm. beautiful so to good. see. I also think that it's really important that, um, and what I love what you just said, because what this passing of, I mean, you can always pass on knowledge, but you can't pay the sacrifice mm. for mm. others. Like, So even with what the teaching that Brooke's talking about is that you can you can give a roadmap that it, and but you can't you can't um, commit to the ten thousand hours for somebody else. You know, Malcolm Gladwell mm, talks mm, about putting totally. in ten thousand hours to become a professional mm, at anything. And right. you talk a lot, Levi, about um, competency, like mm. um, and being competent disciples. And it's it's always the myth, like especially in the so, social media age. It's like you could go on right now, and if I I'm sure if I spoke to Siri in two days' time, all about. How do I get fit the fastest? I'll have all these ads pop up on my social media. Right. It's like, hey, bust the myth. This is easy. This is and and the reality is is that none of the teaching should ever say that because it's all going to cost ten thousand hours. Yes. <clears throat> what you can do is you can, uh, and I hope you know even with Creator that somebody who's five thousand hours into their ten thousand hours that this would come on and be like, you know what. I can do the ne- I can do the next wow. five thousand, yeah. or the somebody's at the start being like, I can start the ten thousand, you know. Absolutely. But what what we're never promising to do is to pay the sacrifice for mm-hmm. others because really we, good. you know, and that's what you're saying. Like, you're teaching, and you, we might be eight thousand hours into our ten thousand hours. I know this is a, probably a labored analogy now, but um, oh, it's so good, it's so helpful. But you're going at seven thousand. This is what I know, mm. you know. So if you're at three and a half, very like, good. Keep going. Yeah. Now I I got to. Give us space to talk about seven a little bit. Jen and I got to be there at the recording, and we've um, we've shared on social media. I snapped my finger; it's fine. It mm-hmm. was a Topo Chico incident. It was in the green room, <laughs> but um, not okay. accident prone. You guys adventure, adventure <laughs> driven. Yeah, I collect stories and scars. Yeah, yeah. and we we both bump into cactuses. But yeah. um, 
you you designed all the visuals when yeah, people do get to eventually it. watch the the music videos. Which right now, if you if you get on YouTube, there's for sure uh, a thousand hallelujahs out at at the time this is list, being listened to. Maybe a couple other singles, but the whole project is coming out eventually called Seven. And when they see the music videos, <clears throat> the visuals came from you. Yeah, well, that's it's part of what we're talking about working together. I've always I've always like I'm. It's funny. I don't, haven't. Really, I don't really have a job. I just have lots of things I'm interested in, and I just kind of do. So um, you, you could kind of put it all together in 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 the under the title of creative director, but it's not absolutely. It's not necessarily what I do. F I wake up in in every day and be like, okay, today I'm going to creatively direct <laughs> something. You know, like it's not really how I spend <laughs> but my you life. Do. But, but then it's I kind of who do. you are. It, it just is. Yeah. Comes and out. again, for everyone watching this, I'm not trying to be like flaky. No, but that's and a beautiful and thing. The, yeah. the symbiotic yeah. Yeah. marriage relationship between you two. Because I hear, but he sees. Yeah. 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 And so mm. what? What Ooh. I would say that is the, the bonus and of imagination. Mm. The blessing of it is that I think <laughs> I can you. interpret. Bless you, blessing. He said blessing, and then you did. Thank you. Our kids call sne don't know sneezes are called sneezes. They call them bless yous. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. yeah. Sorry. Your no, I love so it. But I can't, I can't speak highly enough of the project and not only the music and the song, but the experience and the art mm. and how intentional the images were and the screen was and it all made wow. a statement and it's, it's beautiful. If I have, and I think you, I mean, the four of us, I think have this, but if there's one thing that I think um, as a counterpart to what Brooke does, the only little bit of like, I just have an obsessive personality when it comes to this stuff. Like I care so much like that, that not, not that I become a creative dictator at all. I actually love collaboration and, mm. you know, feel free if, if, if you're part of our team and, and, and I don't live up to this, put it in the comments that he's a fake. He's actually, he's, he's actually <laughs> the meanest gosh. guy on the planet. You know, like, he beats in, me. Feel free, feel free to say that. But, I've never had anything but gruel. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I love collaboration, but I just, I care so much. I, I can't switch it off. Yeah. It's, mm. it's just something that's not in me. So yeah. I can, uh, like, so when Brooke brings the level of artistry that she does to her her, her ministry and her and, and 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 as you said, like when she presents it, it's, always, it's to serve, you know, like Jesus taught great taught us that greatness is. But to have for me, to have the interpretation, the visual interpretation of that, be anything less, it just it actually it would go against it'd be antithetical to who I am. Mm. Like I can't I can't live with that. So that's why the the relationship works so well because, and I'm not saying that these are the greatest visuals and greatest. Cre I'm just saying that I'm telling you, I it's care. worthy of it. Stri yes. Striving for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 trying not to get in the way, and it's not trying to be, and and we and we just we just work together. Like it, it just works, yeah. even though sometimes, um, you know, uh, I'm probably not the easiest to work with. We all aren't in some Listen, way. Listen, <laughs> well, and the the synergy and all that, I can't speak highly enough of the Seven Project. It's so kind. The creator oh, platform, what a beautiful name it is, Children's Book, and everything else your hands are going to be touching in the coming years. And grateful for the unique way in which there's such a spirit of collaboration between us, which mm -hmm. is what brings us to the service of the moon. Mm -hmm. When we discovered that God had you speaking about the Seven Churches and Communion and me speaking about the Seven Churches and Communion and... Just honey from the rock, and here we are sitting on a rock, and so we're just grateful for your friendship, and mm -hmm. we're in your corner. And yes, we are. <clears throat> thank we you. are a big fan of the Lidgett Woods, and I was just realizing earlier that your nickname could be the Woods. Mm -hmm. mm. We're so we're a fan of the it. Woods. Mm. Yeah. That would be much easier. That'd be much easier than Lidgett. Woods. <laughs> Liger, Liger, Liger. And after many years of friendship, <laughs> I finally learned how to spell your maiden name and mm -hmm. how to pronounce it. So that's nice. Fraser. <clears throat> Fraser. Fraser. Thank you for. For having this conversation. Yeah, we love you guys. Love you love very you much. Guys. To the moon. To the moon. And back. Luna Sweet. <laughs>